Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke and on today's episode, we are going to be looking at Dollar Tree craft supplies to see if they're worth it. Let's get started. If you've ever watched any of these haul videos where they have all of the great supplies that you get from Dollar Tree, especially from the Crafter Square, and then you run to your local Dollar Tree and find out they have nothing, <laughs> that's what's happened to me. I have been trying to collect supplies. I keep going to different Dollar Trees because as you know, no two Dollar Trees are the same. So my best one is about 35 minutes away. The one that is closest to me, of course, has the least. So they have one little end cap and a side portion where they have their crafters square supplies. So I've been collecting some different things. Unfortunately, there were still some that I wanted to try, but I just couldn't find. So today's going to be about the glues that they have some of the tools that they have, and then some of the supplies that I just think are pretty amazing. So let's dive into the first one, which is an art supply that I use a lot, and that's spray adhesive. Now, the spray adhesive that I use the most is Studio House. I love this, but I also use the 3M brand a lot, and really the only difference is who has the better coupon uh, or if it's on sale, but I find that they, are, they both work really well, and if you've ever watched my videos where I'm putting up any type of paper or if I'm covering a box, spray mount is the way to go. So I've made a couple of baseline samples. So I've got the spray adhesive that I use, the Dollar Tree spray can, and then the spray bottle. So I'm just going to be using one shim and attaching the thin part of each one of these wood shims so that they're consistent and see how they all work. Now I did shake all of these off of camera, but here's the can, and I was immediately disappointed to see how watery this was. I mean, it's actually dripping off and I did not use that much on it. So I was already pretty disappointed with this, but we're going to try it anyway. Uh, so I stuck it on there and you guys, honestly, I, I couldn't even move it without it falling off. But let's try the second one, which was a bottle. So I shook that up really well. I did a couple of spritzes. It had a lot of overspray. It went over on my mat, but it wasn't as runny. Uh, and it was more like a spray glue, so I thought this one would have a better hope of sticking. When I went to stick it on here, uh, I noticed that the other stick had already come loose. It was not sticking at all. So the can is already failing in my, in my view, but let's let it dry. Now this is the studio house that I use, so I just spray a little bit on there. And you can see, you can't even see the glue on this, which is one of the reasons I like the spray adhesive. It goes on dry and it is immediately tacky. So as soon as I stick it on there, it's done. So I'm gonna hold the first two a little bit and see if I can get them to re-glue. And like I said, that can is just not sticking at all. It was basically a white milky water. I didn't even feel any adhesion to it as I would touch it, but let me give it a second application hold it in place and hope that something works. Now, I have used spray adhesive on woods before, so I know that it is possible. But maybe I'm misusing these, but I found both the bottle spray and the spray adhesive were just not tacky enough. But again, this is wood, so let's look at a different medium and see if perhaps it will work on something else. So here's some paper that I'm going to try. And I'm gonna be, again, showing you exactly which one. So there's the brand name, the bottle, and the can. So let's start with the bottle. And again, it gets that overspray, but I'm gonna press that down. We've got the can, and I'm gonna let it dry for a second before trying to push it down. And then my adhesive, which just goes on immediately. It's just a lightweight aerosol. Because the first two are so liquidy, do you see what it does to the paper immediately? It made it ripple and because it was wet, it's curling the corners, but it's still not sticking. You could see where it's peeling up. So I have to confess, I am not happy with these two. I'm very disappointed. I would recommend, it's $5.99 for this bottle. Use your coupon, get it when it's 50 or 40% off. You get a much bigger bottle and you will have a much better adhesion whenever you're sticking something. 
The next thing we're going to look at is I saw that they have the Aileen's Tacky Glue. Now, I kept thinking they've got to water it down or something. So I pulled out the bottle that I have, and then there's the bottle I got from Dollar Tree. And I want to see if there's a difference. So I'm writing Dollar Tree, <laughs> and then I'm going to write mine with the glue that I had. And quite honestly, I could not tell the difference at all. They were both super thick. Uh, they both have tackiness almost immediately. Uh, so I didn't see any difference. So I was actually really surprised with this. So I'm gonna set these aside, let them dry fully, and see if I can see any difference. But so far, I don't see a difference at all between the Aileen's that I bought from Hobby Lobby and the one that I got at Dollar Tree. So now these have sat for about an hour and it's perfect. So if you see the Aileen's tacky glue, grab it. Next, we're going to try the chalk paint. Now, the Valspar that I always use was about $14, so it's pretty expensive. Now, granted, you get a lot more. I did find that it glides on really well. I've always been happy with this, but these little bottles of the chalkboard paint, I always see at the Dollar Tree. This is one of the com common items. So I found it didn't glide on as well, but it covered in one coat. I gave both of these sticks just one coat uh, and it, it covered really well. They're both right about the same color. They both have about the same sheen. There really wasn't any difference in that. So I let them sit outside for about an hour and they look great. I don't see really any difference between the two. The Valspar is a little bit thicker, but it was such a minuscule difference that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy the Valspar just because of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime my chalkboards. If you didn't know, you should always cover it with chalk completely first and then wipe it off and that will allow you to not have that ghost impression when you use chalk. So it writes on exactly the same. There isn't any difference between the store brand and the Dollar Tree brand of the chalk paint. Now, I have seen these chalk writers a lot, and I have used these before, but I decided to go ahead and test them out here for you. The way these work, they are like one of the Crayola crayons that you can twist out. I don't know if you've seen these before, but the texture of this chalk marker is kind of like a wax pen. Um, these can be put on anything that's got a smooth surface, but if you write on a chalkboard, they look great. They really show up very well pronounced. The difference is when it's a wooden chalkboard surface, they don't clean off. So if you write on a wooden surface, you're going to be disappointed when you try and take it off unless you're willing to get it wet and wipe it off. So just be aware of that, but it worked great on there. So here's a sample of some of the other smaller chalkboards you can get at the Dollar Tree, and you can use these pens on any one of them. This board I'm writing on right now is actually like a veneer, so it's smooth already. So you can get this wet. It's not a painted surface, which means that you can use these pens on, like I said, other things like windows, mirrors, uh, smooth refrigerators. So I tried out this silver pen. I was a little disappointed in the pigmentation of it. It's very light, but I saw a black one. Now they had other colors, but I only got the silver and the black. And forgive my upside down writing, but I was so impressed with this black writer. This works great. Um, and again, it just, you just get a wet wipe and it comes right off. So these would be great to mark your drinks if you're having a gathering. I like taking plates and writing things on them. This is awesome because you can make seasonal statements or birthday wishes or whatever you're celebrating and wipe it right off. So here I am just getting a simple baby wipe and it wipes right off. I'm just gonna dry it so you can see it's as good as new. Now this was just a little sample door I had and it just had a high gloss paint on it. It comes off just as easily. So if you see these little chalk riders, grab them. Like I said, I was a little disappointed with the silver one with the pigmentation, but the black and white ones, worth their weight in gold. Now let's take a look at the fabric glues and the other type of craft glues. This one someone had said was similar to the E6000. As soon as I opened it, I did not agree, but I did like it had this little lid attachment at the top so you won't lose the cap. I, I kind of liked that. Uh, when you open it, it's a thicker consistency 
but it does have a stringy texture to it, much like when you use a glue gun and it has those little strings that come off of it. So I was really eager to see how this one would actually work. So I'm cutting off the tip and I'm going to try gluing these felt leaves to one another. So I'm just gonna put a little on there and like I said, you get the strings immediately like a hot glue gun, but it doesn't have that same thick texture. Now, something I noticed is it does have a good amount of tack to it. So I had a high hope for this one. So I'm gonna press them together and I'm just going to set it aside. Now we're gonna look at the Dollar Tree brand. And something I noticed with a lot of these is the cap where you trim it off is really thick. So you have to cut down and that means that the opening is really large. I like having the ability to cut a smaller hole so that you can control the amount that comes out, but regrettably the way they've designed these lids, that's not a possibility. But again, we're spending a dollar on these. So, so once I finally got the thick portion off, I noticed that it was very liquidy. Uh, as soon as it came out, uh, it came out faster than I expected, but I also noticed that it was pretty runny. Uh, so again, we're going to go ahead and try it, but I also noticed that it started absorbing into the felt right away. So I had to add a little bit more so that I had something to adhere it to. I also noticed that because it absorbed, it went through to the other side, which may or may not be a problem. The last one we're going to try is the name brand of Craftology. This is one I've had around for a long time. I really like it. It has a good thick texture uh, and you can find this at almost all of the hobby stores. But you notice it is much thicker but not as thick as the tacky glue. Now once I played with it, I noticed it went through as well. So maybe that's something I had never paid attention before, uh, paid attention to before when I was using them. So set these aside. I let them sit for an hour and here we are with them all dry and I'm going to show you if they became thick or if they became stiff. So the first one we're going to try is the Craftology and you can see when I tug on it, it actually starts pulling the fibers of the felt. This is now fused together but it's still flexible and one that I enjoy. Now we're going on to the craft and I noticed immediately it pulls away. It was more like when you just attach felt to felt. So it was sitting there, but it wasn't attached. This is the actual fabric glue, and it was the same thing, you guys. As soon as I pulled a little bit, it fell right apart. So I do not recommend these two. Now let's take a look. The square is in the tool department, but that's not what I'm showing you right now. I'm showing you the blade set that they have. This is much like an X-Acto knife, and I have read bad things about these, but I wanted to try them for myself. The first thing I notice, it is definitely thinner than a regular X-Acto knife, which is good or bad. If you have dexterity issues with your hands, having something smaller and lightweight might actually be beneficial to you. Um, but if you want something a little bit thicker and you choose to buy this, you might want to get some sort of a wrap around it so that you have an easier way of gripping it. The other thing I noticed is the area where you slide the blade into was a little bit difficult to work with because even though it unscrews, that slot doesn't actually open. It it's kind of weird. So be very careful when you're sliding that blade in that you don't cut yourself. Now, the Dollar Tree brand obviously is lighter uh, and it is a little bit flimsier. There's a lot more flex in the blade when you're cutting. However, depending upon what you're cutting, that could be a good thing. So I'm just going to get my square that came from the Dollar Tree in the tool department and I'm just going to make a quick slice down with the Dollar Tree knife. And it cut like butter. I was actually very impressed. So I tried a couple of other slices. I had no issue with the knife. Uh, I went to use mine and realized that my blade is totally dull and I need to change it out. You could tell I'd been cutting foam core with this one. So in this specific comparison, the Dollar Tree cut better than my blade. So now I'm going to try cutting a wood shim. This is just a very thin piece of balsa-esque wood. Uh, and again, I'm going to use my knife first I'm going to score it and then see if I can break it off. I never recommend pressing hard enough when you're cutting wood because you risk the blade snapping and that could really hurt you depending upon where it goes. So my blade, even being dull, cut it just fine. Now I'm going with the Dollar Tree blade and I'm going to switch the direction of it so I'm cutting against the grain to see how it cuts. And it went right through it. So 
I was really actually impressed with this. Now something you need to know is the case does not fit the knife if the blade is inside. So if you want to store it in its original package, you have to disassemble it, but it also doesn't have a lid. So you would need to keep the packaging lid that it came with, which doesn't look the best, but it certainly is more secure that way. Now let's move on to the next cutter that I've read about and I wanted to test it out for myself. So I use the Fiskars Roto Blade all of the time and I love this blade. I love that it has the retractable area for safety. I love that you can replace the blades. I think it's easy to use. It's very comfortable in my hand. This one is a lot smaller and the disc that cuts the Roto Blade is definitely much smaller. Now something a lot of people said that they disliked about this is it's a one and done. However, I noticed that you can take that blade off and I was also surprised that it does have a safety valve. It does have the safety on it so that you don't get cut. So I was looking at that more and I noticed that you can just take it apart and get a new blade on there but I don't know where you would find blades this small so that's something to consider. So to put it back together, you just put the same screw on as you would for the Fiskars. Uh, don't over tighten it because if you tighten it, you can't use it as I discovered here. So you have to make sure it's loose. But this also brought me to another thing that I hadn't noticed before. The way it's designed with the safety portion not completely disappearing and the place for the control grip means that the blade is not at a comfortable angle when you cut. So the point that I'm making here is you would have to hold it very upright to actually cut. So let me let me explain that in a different way. So normally when you're cutting, you would hold your elbow and your wrist pretty close to the surface. Um, like with this, I could just go straight across. So you could see if I was slicing, it would be almost in the same parallel lines as the Fiskars cutter. But with this one, in order for the blade to make contact, I have to go at a much bigger, almost 45 degree angle. So be aware of that as you're using it. If you have any wrist, tendon, or arthritis issues, that may be a problem. So I made the first little wavy cut and it, it went through pretty well. Again, because of the angle you have to hold it, I was having a little bit of an issue getting it to not hit that safety cover. But when I went for a straight cut, it went right through, no issues. So that wasn't too bad. But here's a comparison with the Fiskars. The Fiskars, when you go for a wavy cut, because it's a larger blade, you get a lot more control with it, which is nice. Uh, it might be time for me to change my blade on this one as well. But then the straight cuts go straight through. So for the price you're paying, I don't think it's bad. Um, it depends on what you're cutting. I probably wouldn't ever use it for fabric, which the Fiskars you certainly can. But if you're just cutting paper or wrapping paper, I think it's fine. So here's a quick overview before I get into some other items that I really love from the Dollar Tree. The fabric glue and the clear craft glue might be okay for some paper products, but those spray mounts, just throw them away. Don't buy them. If you got, if you did get them, get, get rid of them. I am so disappointed in those, but these two were okay. I'm on the fence with the roto cutter and with the silver chalk marker. I thought they were okay. If I had them, I might use them, but these were the ones that I was most surprised with. That blade I thought was actually just fine. I would definitely use it in my craft area. So if you have one of those, or if you've been thinking about getting one, try it. The two chalk riders I was definitely impressed with. As I said, I have used the white one many times. What I like about it is if you are writing anything outside and the chalk always goes away, those chalk riders will not go away in the weather. It won't go away until you wipe it off with something wet, which means you can have a lot more fun when you're writing things outside on a planter, whether you're writing what plant it is or what seed it is, or just for a seasonal message. So those are a definite, you gotta get those. But the ones that I was truly most surprised about were the tacky glue and the chalkboard paint. I really thought that these were great. So if you find them, snag them.
Now for some honorable mentions that I didn't even compare, I just wanted to mention, I always like the foam mounts, whether they're the teeny tiny ones or the larger squares. So those are just a grab them when you see them. But a lot of people have talked to me about these pink fingertips, especially if you're doing a lot of things with hot glue. So I grabbed some of those and I'm just putting it on the end of my hot glue gun plug so that I always have it close by when I use my hot glue gun and it reminds me not to burn my fingers. <laughs> Now another thing I saw at one of the stores were these magnets and I love making magnets as gifts. I also like using these when I'm doing scrapbooking or card making to make them interactive. So I decided to try these. I liked that it had a little metal disc in it because that means you've already got a built-in craft that you can make out of them. But I was shocked at how strong these were. They're doubled up so if you want to glue them together, you would have an extremely strong and thick magnet, but if you separate them, they are still just as strong. So I'm gonna take the cardboard out of this and show you. The doubling, they're super strong. That paper did not budge. But with the single one, same thing. So I was really impressed with these little magnets. So if you're doing any projects with those, be on the lookout for the magnets. But then in the hardware section, these tools are a must for any crafter. The square, the rubber mallet, and the little hacksaw are tools that I use so often when I'm crafting. Have you tried any of the Dollar Tree products and you thought, oh my gosh, how are these not selling out? Or have you come across a few that you're thinking, why are they wasting my money? Leave me comments below. I love reading what you guys have discovered and you have such creative ideas on using things for different purposes, which I'm always excited hearing about. So leave me those comments. If you wouldn't mind, click that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribing will really help my channel. I am so close to hitting a benchmark of 100,000 subscribers, which I am over the moon excited for. And I could not make any of these videos without my patrons. So a huge thank you to them. And the last thing I'm gonna mention, if you haven't noticed on your desktop or if you're watching this on your tablet or phone, right down below, there's a new listing for merchandise that I'm selling. I've been so excited to play with some of these items. So I've come up with a couple of different things. I've tried my very best to price them as inexpensively as possible. Unfortunately, I'm sourcing them through a company who sets the baseline price. So I'm trying to get it as close to that baseline as possible so that they're affordable for you. But the water bottle I am absolutely in love with. They have painted on with the best material. So they're very high quality. I also have a coffee mug, a hooded sweatshirt, a t-shirt, and a tank top. So if there's something else you would like and you would be interested in supporting me, let me know. I'd be happy to add those items. But if you're interested in getting one of my logoed items, it will further support me in my channel. But I am so excited to see a few of you have already posted on Facebook that you've gotten your hooded sweatshirts or your t-shirts, and it's just so cool to see. So thank you very much. I will see you guys in the next video, which will be in just a few days. Bye.